We say spirits are watching you because we are convinced that there is a ghostly or deity presence around us, even though we can't see or hear it. And who are these so-called ghosts or deities? Where do they come from? Are they some sort of extraterrestrial that's beyond our comprehension? In recent discoveries, archaeologists have found an ancient site called Gobekli Tepe, with large circular structures supported by massive stone pillars that date back 15,000 years ago. This predates Stonehenge 6,000 years and the Egyptian pyramids by 7,000 years. The name in Turkish means pot belly hill. Funny as it may sound, the locals regarded it as a sacred place. So who built it? And what's the purpose of it? Could it be the works of extraterrestrials? Let's take a closer look. It's October 1994, and a German archaeologist known as Klaus Schmidt is about to make a grand discovery that will change everything that we have known and accepted about human history, and he didn't even know that. He had been working at an excavation site known as the Navali Kori in Turkey, which had recently been submerged by a water reservoir. While reading a research document, he came across a paragraph that mentioned the Gobekli Tepe. There was little attention given to it, and only a few sentences were written about it in the report that he was reading. The site had been surveyed by archaeologists from the University of Chicago and Istanbul University 30 years prior. In 1963, they had visited the place and concluded that the site was probably a military outpost with a burial site, as they mistook the top parts of the T-shaped stones present at the site as grave markers. They could only see the top parts since they were buried deeply in the soil and hence did not know that they were T-shaped or anything. Schmidt will not make the same mistake three decades after. With time on his hands due to his recent misfortune at the Navali Kori, he decided to scout other archaeological sites in Turkey, hoping to find similar sites to it. In 1994, he ended up visiting the Gobekli Tepe to re-examine the site. He was guided to the location by native farmers named Mahmut and Ibrahim Yildiz, who owned the land the site was situated on. Luckily for him, or the archaeological world at large, these two had discovered the interesting finds whilst plowing the area and quickly showed it to him. He soon realized that the place was more than the initial reports had made it out to be. He saw flint fragments at the location, which were reminiscent of Stone Age working sites. With his training and intuition coupled with his experience at Navali Kori, he was quickly able to make this out and further investigated the area. He could tell that the stone slabs were not grave markers, as were made out to be by previous surveyors. Instead, they were prehistoric megaliths. He gathered enough evidence and data, then approached the German Institute of Archaeology to fund a digging of the site. They agreed, and within a year of his visit, work began. Little did they know that their findings were going to change everything we knew and had accepted as history. Prior to his discovery, the Sumerians were considered the earliest civilization dating up to 5000 BC. Yet, when he and his team carbon dated the site, the Gobekli Tepe was dated at about 12,000 BC. This is 7,000 years earlier than the Sumerian culture, which had been long considered the earliest of known civilizations. Not only that, but the Gobekli Tepe is roughly the size of 30 full-size football pitches, which makes it 50 times bigger than stone Stonehenge and about 7,000 years older. This baffled him and his team, as well as archaeologists and scientists all over the world. It was initially thought that our ancestors around that time in history were hunters and gatherers. This means they mostly foraged plants and hunted animals for food and were nomads. Hunters and gatherers, although considered capable of impressive art, were not considered sophisticated enough to build complex architectural structures, such as those found at Gobekli Tepe. There was certainly no way before his discovery that scientists will think and accept that humans who were still wearing animal hides and hunting by throwing rocks will ever be capable of putting together such a monument. And you can't blame them. We won't have made such predictions either. It would have been almost laughable. Yet, here he was, with undeniable evidence right before him. In digging out the site, Schmidt and his team found out that it was mostly made up of different enclosures. The stones that had been mistaken for gravestone markers were actually T-shaped pillars that could reach heights of 6 meters or 20 feet. Some of the initially discovered pillars weighed as much as 50 tons. 
These rocks were further fitted into sockets that were hewn out of local bedrock. Today, more than 200 pillars in 20 circles are known to be at the site. The circular enclosures were about 10 meters to 20 meters per circle. Each of them had about 8 to 11 T-shaped pillars surrounding two larger ones in the middle. Not all the enclosures were circular, though. Some were found to be rectangular after a period of excavation. Fast forward to what we know today. It is believed that the various pillars and enclosures were built in phases. The circular enclosures are thought to be the first phase of building. The second phase is thought to be characterized by the building of rectangular rooms with floors of polished lime. The phases are referred to as the pre-pottery Neolithic A and B. The pre-pottery Neolithic period marks the beginning of village life, and structures found within this period have always provided evidence of the earliest human settlements in the world. These settlements have always been associated with the transition of our ancestors from hunting and gathering to agriculture. The pre-pottery Neolithic is divided into two sub-periods as stated the pre-pottery Neolithic A and the pre-pottery Neolithic B. The first phase of Gobekli Tepe is projected to be in the pre-pottery Neolithic A, which is between 9600 and 8800 BC, whilst the second phase is projected to be in the pre-pottery Neolithic B, which is between 8800 and 7000 BC. There are some notable differences between both phases, that go beyond their circular and rectangular orientation, though. The most notable of these differences is the finesse and skill with which the various enclosures at the Gobekli Tepe were built. They were reduced with time. Every new enclosure built was less impressive compared to the former, in terms of the quality of the carvings and the general architecture. Also, the rectangular enclosures were much smaller compared to the circular ones. Stepping away from these facts and numbers, there are still questions that need to be answered. How did people without technology such as ours transfer stones weighing up to 50 tons from a quarry to a mountain hill? How were they able to position and make it stand up straight? Who did they make it for and why did they make it? How did they get the required technical know-how and skills required for a job of such magnitude? The simple truth is, we don't know. We simply don't have all the answers after all these years. What we do have, however, are a couple of theories. Let's start with the purpose of the structure. Why was it created? The earlier assertion by the University of Chicago and the Istanbul University about it being a burial ground has already been debunked since excavation works began. What was initially assumed to be grave markers ended up being large T-shaped pillars. Also, no human bones that will fully support this assertion have been found so far at the site. In an interview with Andrew Curry, Schmidt mentioned that some bones belonging to humans have been found at the location. However, not in significant numbers that will establish the place as a burial ground. He however hypothesizes that further excavation could potentially lead to a burial ground. Significant numbers of animal bones have however been found, which makes some in the scientific community believe it might have served as a shrine or temple. This position is however a popular one in archaeology, whenever archaeologists are unable to conclude on the purpose of a structure. Schmidt himself noted that the animal bones that they found on site had cuts and splintered edges on them as though they had been cut or butchered and then cooked. The bones were from animals such as wild boar, sheep, and red deer. This, to him, could have pointed to rituals or festivals that were held at the location. Schmidt actually believes that the location could be the first sacred and holy temple in human history. The areas surrounding the Gobekli Tepe were investigated to see if similar structures will be found or perhaps a settlement, considering the fact that there was no settlement near the site. Lo and behold, smaller settlements were found in areas not too far from the Gobekli Tepe, with some of these areas having smaller versions of the enclosures at the site. This makes some in the community believe that the place could have indeed served as a holy place of worship, as Schmidt put it. The smaller locations they hypothesize could have been mini temples, with the Gobekli Tepe being the main cathedral where major occasions would be held. As plausible as this might sound, there are many who believe that the structure could have been more than that. 
Many of the excavated pillars had various sculptures on them. Many of these sculptures include animals like the lion, ox, pig, fox, antelope, snake, spider, and vulture. One of the first theories that came with the presence of these animals was that the place was an actual place of worship, and perhaps these animals were revered, feared, and worshipped. But then again, on further inspection, it is clear that there is more to these sculptures on the pillars. One of the pillars has an armadillo carved on it, which is not indigenous to Turkey where the Gobekli Tepe is. This extinct animal should not have been known by individuals living in Turkey, as it was native to the American continent and the Gobekli Tepe is in Turkey. The only plausible explanation is that individuals in the Stone Age actually went across the Atlantic Ocean to America, saw the armadillo, and somehow made it back to Turkey to engrave it on their pillars. Mysterious, right? Well, it only gets more mysterious from here. A closer look at the sculptures reveals long, thin human hands that are engraved into the T-shaped humanoid slabs, among others. Wondering what's so special about that? The human hands sculpted into the rocks share similarities with other statues from the Stone Age era found in other cultures such as the Easter Island stone figures and Tiwanaku. If it was just about the armadillo and the figures from the Easter Island stone figures, we could have simply stated that they could have somehow crossed the ocean to America. However, similar sculpting is found in ancient statues in Bolivia, Tiwanaku, Azerbaijan, Gobustan, Tahiti, Marquesas Islands, Colombia, St. Augustine, Egypt, and Costa Rica, which raise more questions and make it more mysterious, especially since the figures at the Gobekli Tepe predates any of these structures. This leads to one unpopular theory involving the Aborigines. Bruce Fenton, a researcher and author, suggests that the Gobekli Tepe was built by Aboriginal Australians. Before you mentally throw out this theory, hear it out. He noted similarities between the Aboriginal cave paintings in Northern Australia and the sculptures made at Gobekli Tepe. For example, this symbol worn by leaders of Aboriginal tribes is found sculpted on one of the pillars at Gobekli Tepe. He was one of the first to make this connection, and the symbol depicts two people sharing knowledge. There are many other similarities, such as the rainbow serpent, the mother goddess, and the emu. Even the T-shaped stones may be linked to a T-shaped hairdresser that Aboriginal tribe members wear as well. Fun fact, they also sometimes pose with their hands meeting together at their tummies similar to the T-shaped stones at the Gobekli Tepe. Despite these striking similarities, the main issue with this theory is explaining the movement. He uses the into Africa theory of evolution and states that early humans did not necessarily emerge from Africa, instead most likely from Australia and then to Africa. He challenges the long-standing consensus and states that Aboriginal Australians are most likely the ancestors of all modern humans. Think it's too wild? Apparently not. He supported his claims using scientific evidence. There is also the third school of thought, which states that it might have been an astronomical center. Those who subscribe to this school of thought state that it could have been built to monitor the night sky. There is some evidence that shows that the T-shaped pillar in five circles accurately points to the brightest star in Cygnus Deneb. This astronomical phenomenon would have happened around 12,000 BC, which is around the same time that the Gobekli Tepe surfaced. Mysterious, huh? Gobekli Tepe actually overlooks the Heron Plain, where the ancients believed in the power of the north, the first point of creation, which is also the point of heaven, where souls came from and returned to in death. This was a ritual those in Heron celebrated annually. Is it a mere coincidence that the Gobekli Tepe points to the same area, the brightest star, Deneb, in the constellation of Cygnus, also sometimes referred to as the celestial swan or bird? Researchers and authorities on the subject, like Andrew Collins, don't think so. In both the Old and New World, the constellation has been at the core of many religious beliefs, creation myths, and funerary rites. In effect, many tales have been told about a deity coming from the same constellation, who has been called different names over the years. The Ahura Mazda in ancient Persia and the Nut Goddess in ancient Egypt. 
To researchers who subscribe to this view, it will not be very surprising if this was a place of astronomy holding such beliefs or earlier iterations of those beliefs. At this point, you should have realized that there are many theories trying to explain and understand what the Gobekli Tepe is, who built it, and why they built it. As interesting as these theories might be, none of them is 100% convincing. There are even theories that suggest that the place might be a recording of a long-forgotten cataclysmic event, and the animals sculpted on the rocks are simply records of animals that existed then. Some even suggest it is a recording of the biblical flood involving Noah with the animals being those that were saved after. Then there is also the theory that involves extraterrestrials. There are some who subscribe to the idea that perhaps the hunters and gatherers were at some point exposed to advanced civilization or extraterrestrials who might have taught them a lot including how to build. As wild as this might seem, some evidence suggests it's not impossible. An example of such evidence is the Urfa Man, which is an ancient human-shaped statue found in excavations in Balikigal near Urfa in the southeast of modern Turkey. The area is not so far from Gobekli Tepe, and the statue can be carbon dated to the pre-pottery Neolithic A. How does this statue point to aliens, you might ask? Well, for one, it features a highly sophisticated looking man in advanced garments, which might be reminiscent of an advanced lost civilization or simply put, aliens. An advanced civilization teaching hunters and gatherers to build this monument will be a more cohesive explanation considering what the hunters and gatherers achieved with Gobekli Tepe with the limited tools, knowledge, and technology that is thought to have existed back then. Frankly, each of these theories has great points to support its viability. However, we will never be able to tell with great certainty which is truly accurate, maybe not until the whole site has been fully excavated and studied. Until then, we keep doing our best to unearth as much truth as we can.